Hello everyone, this is Jonathan Little. I'm back with part two of the 21st week of WeeklyPokerHand.com, where today I'm going over a 5 cent, 10 cent hand history that I played for BankrollBuilderSeries.com, where basically I take a $300 bankroll and try to grind it up as fast and as reasonably as I can while maintaining a decent bankroll. And so far, you know, it's going okay. Nothing's going terribly. Um, right here, we're going to be taking a look at this hand from my opponent, Annihilator's point of view. So right here, um, I, Kagam 7 f 7 this is my name on Lock Poker, I raise it up to 30 cents, and Annihilator likes to make it 95 cents with Jack-10 suited. I think this is perfectly fine. I think calling is okay as well, but I would probably 3-bet this in his spot as well. So, so far, so good. I think this is a perfectly fine play. And when Kag calls, you can't really think that he has anything too great. Um, on the flop, Annihilator should be continuation betting pretty wide, particularly on flops where it's like one big card and two little cards. It's generally going to be tough for your opponents to call. So I would make a continuation bet, but I think Annihilator makes a pretty big error of betting pot here. This is a, a bet that you can't really balance too well, because you're not going to be betting pot here with King-10 and 7-8 and Aces and a flush draw. You know, you don't really want to be betting large with all those hands. You'd much rather bet small, particularly with your bluffs. And if you're 3-betting 17% of the time, you're going to have a decent amount of bluffs in your range. Anytime you're bluffing a lot, you need to be betting smaller because you want your bluffs to be as cheap as possible. So right here, I think this is the first major error that Annihilator has made. I would probably bet something like a dollar ten into this pot. And if uh, Kag's sitting over here with like Ace-Queen or worse, he's just going to fold. So I think a bet of uh, about a dollar ten would be good. When uh, Kag calls, you are pretty much done with the hand. There's not too much you can do in this spot. If you turn a draw, like say the turn's an Ace, a Queen, a 9, or a heart, I would probably go ahead and bet again. And those would be mainly as semi-bluffs. And you may notice that like a queen and a 9 don't really put an overcard on the board, so they don't really scare your opponent. But, you know, sometimes players will call the flop with stuff like 7-8 and then give up to further aggression. So even though they're not super scary cards, they're going to be scary enough to where you should probably go ahead and bet again if you pick up any of those straight draws or gut shots. And obviously with a flush draw, you have a lot of equity. On the turn, the turn is a 6. This is not a card I would generally continue on. It's, it doesn't really change the board. So if Kag's sitting over here like pocket 9s, he's probably not going to fold if you decided to call us on the flop. Um, he may fold pocket 9s, but I don't really think it's worth it to try to blow him off of that such a small range of like 8s, 9s, 10s, jacks, and queens. So uh, he checks, and I later checks. I think that's fine. And this would be checking to give up. Kag checks it back. So now when Kag checks it back, you have to assume he has something like top pair bad kicker, like he has, or something like a straight draw or a flush draw. And now notice that a straight draw just made a pair if he had seven, if he had five six, which he probably is not, is not even calling a three bet with. Um, if he had seven six, he has two pair, which he may slow play, but probably not. So you can kind of discount that. So really, I think Kag's range is pretty much flush draws and um, top pair type hands. So knowing that, Annihilator likes to check the Queen River, probably to give up. And then Kag throws out a small bet of 210. And this is always a tough spot because obviously we have Jack High, we're not going to call. We're either going to raise or fold. And I think a shove here, I'm not going to say it's terrible, but I don't think it's that great. And the reason is because Annihilator's range just looks so, so weak at this point. There's nothing he can really have. Whenever you're making a bluff, especially once you start moving up to higher stakes, you always need to think about what hands make sense that you would do this with for value. And you need to make sure that you're actually playing your value hands in that manner. So like right here, the only hands that really make sense to go for a check raise on the river are maybe King Queen and Pocket Queens. And that's just a really tiny range. So representing such a small range here is generally not going to work against a, a good player because they're just going to realize that you can't have a strong hand here very often at all. So they're going to snap you off whenever you go all in. At a lower state game, though, however, I do not think this is that bad of a play because a lot of players will look at this and say, well, all I have is top pair, so i got to fold. And that's the end of their thought process. Um, so I actually do not think this is that bad of a bluff at 5 cent, 10 cent, even though it's not something that I would do too often because it seems like guys always call me. I actually don't think it's that bad of a play. 
Um, you just have to know who you're playing against. If you're playing against a guy that will just get scared off his hand because you're being aggressive, I think it's good. But if you're playing against someone that is very capable of hand reading, probably not so good. So that's going to be that for this episode. If you guys have any questions or comments, or if you'd like me to review one of your hands, please feel free to send them in. This has been Jonathan Little for WeeklyPokerHand.com. Thanks for watching.